Yeah. Save the best for last. It's literally the coolest table. Right. Right. There's, right. there's, nice, there's a nice little breeze. Little breeze right. over here. Very relaxed. You're gonna tell us all the secrets. What's gonna happen? All the secrets. You guys get all the best stuff. So, season finale was pretty intense. Um, what's gonna happen to Jane and Kurt? Well, let me just tell you everything. Yeah. We're, I mean, I think, you know, the show picks up three months after uh, the season finale. It's, uh, they're all in a dark space, as you can imagine. They've all been through hell. And uh, the first episode is really about how they can reconcile what happened last year and whether they can continue to work with Jane and, uh, and, <clears throat> and bring down the group that did this to all of them, did this to Jane, well, even though Jane originally was the spearhead of, of this, you know, this organization. Um, so yeah, so that's in a nutshell. But there's, you know, what's exciting for us, I think, is we really wanted to create a second season that was rewarding for fans, obviously, but that had some points of entry for people that are maybe going to check out the show this year. We're at a new time slot. It's a lot earlier. You know, like, it, a lot of people are like, I'd love to watch it. I get very sleepy around 9.30. So now we're right on. We've got to. We're Wednesdays at 8. Come on over. So we know that there's going to be some new audience, and we want to make sure without annoying our, our loyal viewers that there's there's multiple points of entry for the show. So we're, we're introducing some new characters, some new bad guys, uh, there's a new team dynamic that obviously there has to be since she was arrested at the end of last season, and uh, we're just really excited. You said last year when we were here when it was about two to go on the yeah. air, you said that you wanted this to be non-stop. There was yeah. no slow burn. It was going to go bang, bang, bang. That's right. And really, those last two episodes were just like, what and what yeah. and what? And it, so, is that case going to yes. that yeah. going yeah. to continue? I mean, you know, we... I, we have an amazing group of writers that work on this show. Like we're extraordinarily lucky to have them, and we start earlier than we start about a month and a half earlier than everyone else. You know, and uh, we, you know, we we like to know what the last episode is going to be and work backwards so that we can have that pace and just burn through story in a way that's not reckless. Because a lot of shows like burn through story and then they're like, oh no. Well, now what? We've painted ourselves into a corner, so like we have a very clear map of how the season's going to lay out. I think it's even more exciting than last season, just because we're able to start at such an elevated yeah. place, and you, you know. And you know, and we, yeah, you know exactly. And hopefully, love most of our characters. It all comes from Martin and I and Greg Rundell being just like huge fans of TV. Yeah. And the thing that I hate the most is when you're really invested in a show and in the characters, and then suddenly you're like. Wait a minute, they are making this up as they go along. We don't ever want our audience to feel that way. We want them to be able to sort of buckle their seatbelt. It's a fast ride, but they can feel confident that they're on track, that, that a story has been laid out. And so I think that's a lot of the early work that gets done, yeah. is to make sure that we really have a beginning, middle, and end. So, And then we can parcel out that information, but there's also there's so much story to tell. We get deeper into all of our characters' lives. Martin and I are also big fans of the original Law and Order, and with like those moments where you actually learn something personal about Lenny and you just sort of lean in, so we've got some of that fun stuff too. Yeah. Well, you've done a really great job of fleshing out these characters and delving into their emotional lives, even though it's been so long to speak, which I feel like, you know, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I think what's great too, and I mean, Sarah said this earlier today, but you know, we the show is really evolving into an ensemble drama. You know, you got to learn a lot about Patterson last year, and I think she really popped because we were able to give her the screen time. You know, that that character had. But this year, you're really gonna like Rob and Audrey have uh, an amazing storyline this year. Everyone's got everyone's got something really spectacular because we have. A very, very deep bench of amazing actors, you know? And like ukulele. Yeah, ukulele Roach. Yeah, phenomenal, absolutely. and we barely got to tap into what he's capable of. And and so then, we're really lucky. And then the new actor who As many of you know, you know, amazing. Archie Punjabi is joining the show from The Good Wife, who's like, you know, we're such a huge Good Wife fans. We're so excited. Just as fans, and she's on the show. Yeah, she's I know. amazing. She's amazing. She's amazing. And she, like, as I said earlier, like, I never root against anyone else's success, truly, because it's so hard, and like, we should all just be supportive of one another in this business, but the one show that I was kind of like, oh, is it maybe not getting picked up, was uh, her show, because, like, we just had our sights, she was the model for the character, and 
so the dream of We had originally her. called the character Archie because we were like, well, we're never going to get her, so we might as well, yeah, we might so as well call her Archie. Like, yeah, very perfect. quickly watching the scene, if, uh, and, and so we were so, so excited and lucky to And she's, have uh, we're, you know, we're about two episodes into filming the new season, and she's just blowing everybody away. She's so good. We can't say a lot about the character. She works for the NSA, uh, and she she's going to play a major role in helping the team reconcile their very mixed emotions towards Jane and each other after the events of last season. What's really fun about the opening of the season is everyone knows everything. There's no secrets anymore. Everybody knows who Jane was, who Jane wasn't, and uh, everybody knows what was happening last year. So we really, again, you know, for new viewers, it's not like there's a kind of a crib built in because they've got to, everyone's got to hear everything, finally. And then we go from there. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's really about, this season is about family in a lot of ways. It's about, it's about trust and, and, and choosing who you're going to be day to day. And, uh, and so last year, you know, like, we'll know <clears throat> right away in the first episode, you're going to learn Jane's real name. You're going to learn who, she's, who she is, where she's really from. You know, all of that stuff you get right away, and then we grow from there. Oh, no, the tattoos. Oh, they're still very important. Yeah. We're actually going to be using her tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> the tattoos, I mean, what we I think we struck a good balance last year. You know, the show is half procedural, half character drama. And so the, the tattoos still play an important role in the show and in the engine of how the show works. Uh, but, but it allowed, like, for instance, the first episode, there are no real tattoo clues in the first episode. But then the second episode, we're right back into it in, I think, a very organic way. So the show, it allows the show to be different but not feel totally changed, you know? I think the tattoos are, like, one of the most interesting and novel aspects of the show. Yeah. How do you guys, what kind of thought processing do you guys put in with the writers and kind of designing those clues and the puzzles yeah. and involving well, the audience? The, in the writer's room, there is life-size uh, pictures of Jamie with all the tattoos. Yeah. It's the only workplace where it's like kind of okay to have naked pictures of your coworker up on the wall, uh, but it's like it's actually kind of it's kind of necessary. I like to build a, a warm, safe place. But um, uh, so yeah, no, we I mean there are tattoos obviously that have been on our body since the beginning that we we know play an uh, important role as the story unfolds. But um, but I think what's great about uh, uh, you know we have we have such puzzle nerds on our show like we really get excited about that part. You know like we. Um, uh, we work with David Kwong, you know, the, our puzzle consultant from the New York Times and, and uh, the world. And uh, he, uh, we really have a great, like, we just even episode five, there's just like, it's so thrown away, but like, there's a, there's a coding method that's like, it's like 10 seconds of screen time. It took us like three and a half hours to figure out, but we're like, I'm so proud of it. It's so cool and great. So I think, you know, we really, it needs that stuff, regardless of the screen time it gets, needs to really work. You know, like it's the type of thing that if you're a puzzle person, you should be able to sit down and be like, oh yeah, no, I could, I could do that. You know, and we did a great thing with Entertainment Weekly last year where we would actually just release some of the tattoos and people could sit down and figure them out before the show aired. And uh, so yeah, no, that's a, that's a great part of the show. And we don't want to lose that. And we have plenty of tattoos to sustain us for many years. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day.